In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to create this procedural smooth rock material. And this smooth rock material kind of also looks like a stylized rock material as well, because it kind of has some little spots with smoother places. And you can also turn down the detail amount if you want to make it look more like a stylized rock. And after we create the procedural material, I'll show you how to join it together into this custom nude. So we first have the overall scale to change the size of the entire material. And then we have three different scale values here. So we have the noise scale, that'll just change the size of the noise texture in the material, then just the wave scale, and then also just the Voronoi scale. So you can really customize the material and make it look quite different by changing these three scale values. You can make it a bit more bumpy or a bit less bumpy kind of by changing it and changing the detail. And then you can also just hover your mouse over the values and hit the backspace if you want to reset those values. Now there's also some colors here. So there's color one, and then there's also colors two. So you have two different colors to kind of change the rock. So you can make two different shades of rock. Then we have these cool distortion values. So if you turn it up more, it's kind of going to break the material that doesn't really look like rock. But if you turn it down, you can kind of get a different look. So changing that distortion value. And then there's also the second distortion value, which you can use. And I'd recommend just turning it up just by a small amount to adjust it better. Then there's also two detail values. So if you turn it all the way down, you can see it looks like a very stylized rock. And something you can do is turn the detail here, the first detail, just to like a four. And I think this definitely looks like a stylized rock or a nice smooth rock because it really doesn't have that much detail, but there are some little chunky areas and then like some smoother bits. So that looks really cool as well. Or you can leave the detail at 15. And then there's a second layer of detail here. So detail level two, you can make it look even more detailed if you want. Then there is the roughness of the material, but I have it turned up to one because I want to look very rough since it's a rock. It is a dry, rough rock. Then we also have the bump strength. You could turn this down and up if you want to make it look a bit more bumpy. And then we also have the displacement strength to pop out the mesh. So if you want to make it look really bumpy, you could of course bump out the displacement and make it look really chunky. And if you'd like to purchase this procedural material and help support the channel, you can get that on my Gumroad store and Patreon page. The links are in the description. You can also check out my ultimate procedural material pack if you'd like to purchase all of my materials. And to learn how to create more procedural materials, definitely check out my blend procedural material tutorial playlist on YouTube. Links are in the description. So real quick, I'll show you my scene setup if you want to set up the same way that I have. So I went to the add menu and I went to mesh and I added an icosphere. And then right after I added the icosphere, if I click right behind me here on the subdivisions, after you add the icosphere, I'm going to turn up to six. So it is nice and smooth and round and it will have more geometry for the displacements to pop out the mesh. And I'll use the object context menu and shade it smooth. Then I'll scale this object down and I'll type in a 0.24, hit enter, press control A, and then I can apply the scale. So that's the new default size of the object. And then I'll move this over to the side. And then to add in the rock object, what I'm going to do is click here on edit and I'll go to the user preferences. And here on the add-ons tab, I'm going to go to the search and I'm going to search for extra and I'll turn on the add mesh extra objects add-on and I'll close the user preferences. So you can now go to the add menu and you can go to mesh and down here you can see there are all these extra objects, but I'm going to add the rock generator. And then right behind me or right next to me, you can click here to turn on the rock set settings to see the rock settings and you can turn off the user random seed and then you can change the seed and just kind of find a rock shape that you like. You can also go into edit mode and you can pull around the vertices to kind of change the rock shape. And I can scale the rock down, just kind of stick it over here. And then also over here on the side panel on the modifier properties, you can turn up the subdivisions. So I like turn to the levels viewport and render up to three. And then what you can do to apply all the modifiers at once is you can click on object and you can convert and you can just to convert to mesh and that's going to apply all the modifiers. And then also to make the geometry a little bit nicer, what I'll do is click on object mode and I'll go to sculpt mode and then I'll hit the R key to turn on the remesh and I'll move my mouse to kind of change the size of the remesh and then I'll press control R. So that'll remesh it. So if I go into edit mode now, you can see the geometry is quite a bit better. And then I can go back from sculpt mode back to object mode. So that's what I did to create the rock. And so here's the rock that I came up with that I'll be using in the video. Then I also added a camera, so you can just add a camera and you can just point it at the objects. And if I click over here on the object data properties of the camera, I turn the focal length up to 80 just to zoom the camera in a little bit. And then as for the lighting, if I go up here into the rendered viewport mode, I did this first area light right here, kind of on the back to give a rim light, and I set the power to 300. That's the first one. And then for the second rim light, I set this to 86 and I kind of had it pointed down. And then also for this last rim light right here, this one was another background light here for a rim light and I set the power to about 150. 
Now it also gets some nice realistic lighting and reflections. I went over here to the world properties and I added in this Brick Factory 01 1K HDRI. This is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com. The link will be in the description. So once you download the HDRI, you can click on the yellow dot here next to color. You can choose environment texture and then click on the open button to open up the downloaded HDRI. Now also, if you go up here to the render properties, I'm gonna be using the Cycles rendering engine because I'm going for realism, but you could also use Eevee if you want to. And then also I'm gonna open up the film tab right here and I'll check mark the transparent button so that the background is transparent. And then also down here on the color management, I'll be using the view transform of Filmic and the look to very high contrast to pop out the colors and make it look more saturated. So I'm in the shading workspace. So I have the 3D viewport right over here and I'm in the rendered mood. And then right over here, I have the shader editor. So I'll select an object. I'll click on new to add a new material and I can rename this to smooth rock. And then I'm gonna click and drag here on the material dropdown and drop it onto the same rock or the other rock object so that they both have the same material. And then I'll also be using the Node Wrangler add-on in the video. So if you don't have that, you can click on edit you can go to the preferences and here on the add-ons tab, you can search for node and just enable the node wrangler add-on in the user preferences. So I'm now gonna be adding the three main nodes, the three main textures that we'll be using to create this. So I'll go to the add menu and I'll search for a, a noise texture. Let's drop this over here. We'll also go to the add menu and we'll search for a wave texture, drop this here, and then go to the add menu one more time and we're gonna search for a Voronoi texture, drop it here. So these are the three main textures we'll use. And then I'll hold down the control and shift key and select the noise texture and that is gonna preview the node on the object. Now to use the feature of the Node Wrangler, you can press Control T and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping and make sure you do this when the noise texture is selected. So press Control T and then I want to use the object coordinates. So I'll plug the object into the vector of the mapping and the mapping vector can go into the vector of the noise. And the object coordinates are going to place the noise texture on the object more evenly. So we can now change the settings of the textures. So for this noise texture, I'm going to turn the scale to 16 and then I'll turn the detail to 15, but I'll leave the other settings how they are. Let's control shift and select the wave texture and I can change some of these settings. So for the waves, I'm going to turn this to a 1.5 and then I'll turn the distortion to an 18. I'll also turn the detail all the way up to 15 so it's more detailed and the detail scale I'm going to turn to a 1.2 and then this detail roughness I will turn to a 0.6 so it's even more detailed. Let's control shift and select the Voronoi texture and I can change these settings. So for this one I'm going to turn the scale up to 15 but then I'll leave all the other settings how they are. So now we have three different textures here. So the noise texture is just kind of some noise. The wave texture has these really detailed waves. And then the Voronoi texture is just a bunch of little dots. So now I'm going to start to mix these together. So what I first want to do is control shift and select the wave texture. And I want the noise texture to distort the wave texture so it doesn't look quite like waves, but it looks more noisy. So I'm going to plug the factor into the vector of the wave. Now that's distorting it way too much. So to make it be less strong or having less of an effect over the wave texture, I'll go to the add menu and I'll search for a mix color. And we'll put the mix color between the noise and the wave. Now I want to mix between the noise texture, which is making it distorted and the mapping, which isn't distorted at all. So the factor is gonna go into color B, but then this mapping vector, this is gonna go into color A of the mix. Now, if I drag the factor around, you can see that it is distorting it more and less. So if it's turned to zero, it's just using the wave. But if I turn it up more, it's going to be using more of the noise. So it's really distorted. But you can see the texture is being moved around a lot. So I'm going to click on the mix type here and I'm going to change it to linear light. And this way you can see that it is being distorted now, but the texture isn't moving around so much. So I now want to turn this factor way down to a very small number. So I'll turn it to a 0.05. So that way the noise is just distorting the waves just a little bit. So now I can kind of compress these nodes and make it look a bit nicer. So I'm going to do the same thing for the wave and the Voronoi. So the wave texture is going to distort the placement of the Voronoi. So I'll select the linear light and I'll press shift D to duplicate it and drop it here after the wave texture. And then I can drop the Voronoi after the linear light here. Now this wave texture color should go into color B and then we're going to take this original mapping which isn't distorted and we're going to put that into color A. That way, because we have color A and color B, now the factor is blending between not distorting at all and distorting it a lot. 
And also let's control shift and select the Voronoi texture again until we're previewing the distance value. So I can now drag this and you can see it's distorting it more and more. So that's making a very cool texture. And so the distortion value that I'm going to use on the factor of the linear light, I will type in 0 0.02. So that way it's just distorted a little bit. So that is the main texture for the rock. So I'm now going to put the distance into the displacement to actually give it some bump. And let's control shift and select the principled shader to preview it. And then also just for now to see this a little bit better, I'm going to turn the roughness up to one. We do want the roughness to be up to one. And then the base color for now, I'll just make it kind of like a gray color so we can see it a bit better. Now the displacement isn't actually working because even though it's making it look bumpy, the edges are really smooth. So to fix this, we need to go over here to the side panel. We need to go to the material settings and we need to go down here to the settings. So open up the settings and then the surface and then the displacement. We want to change the bump only to displacement and bump. And this is telling the material that it can use the displacements. Now it is bumping out now, but there's a problem and that is that it's like jutting off to the side. And that is because I need to convert the black and white data into displacement data that the shader can use. So I'll go to the add menu and I'll search for the displacement node and we'll drop it right here between the Voronoi and the displacement. And we want the Voronoi texture distance to be going into the height value of the displacement. So now it is working properly, but it's really sharp. So on this scale, I can just turn this way down to a 0 0.015, and that way it's going to be much more subtle. And now you can see we're getting a really cool rock texture. Now I want to control this a little bit better because I want some parts to be a bit more smooth. Right now it's just a little bit too chunky. So I'll go to the add menu and I'll search for a color ramp. I will stick the color ramp here between the Voronoi texture and the displacement. Now if I click on the black tab and make it lighter, you can see it's going to be a little bit more smooth. And then if I take this white color and make it a little bit darker, it's going to be even more smooth. So if these values are the same exact value, it's very smooth. But if you want to make it a little bit more chunky and a little bit more sharp, you could turn that down. So you can see right here it's super smooth the values are basically the same but if i turn it down a bit now it's just a little bit more sharp and a little bit noisy in some areas and if you want to use the same exact hex values that i'm using the first one here this lighter one will be a hex value of e1 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 and then the second one here the more gray one this is going to be a hex value of 969696 you could also click on the white tab and you could drag the white tab over and that is going to kind of clamp it. It's going to make it more sharp. So now much of it looks smooth and there's only a few parts where they're chunky and noisy. So you could do that if you wanted to, but I'm going to leave this back over here because I do want the whole thing to be just a tiny bit noisy and have a little bit of detail. So now what I want to do is I want to take the Voronoi texture distance and I want to put that into the base color so that some parts are darker and some parts are lighter. But then to control this better, I'll go to the add menu and I'll search for a color ramp. We'll put the color ramp after the Voronoi texture, but before the base color. And let's actually box select these nodes and just kind of drag them up a bit so it's a little bit more even. So now what I can do is I can drag this black tab over to make it more contrasty. So I'll put the black tab kind of in the center. So now some parts are lighter and some parts are darker. So that'll give a bit of variation. But of course we want to change the colors and I want to add customizable values. So I'll go to the add menu and I'll search for a mix color and we'll put this between the color ramp and the principled shader. Now the color can go into the factor. So now we have color A and color B and those are going to be the two raw colors. So I'm going to make this kind of a darker gray and a lighter gray. And if you want to use the same values that I'm using, you can go to the hex value. And for the color A, you can punch in 262626. Two, two, and for color B, you can punch in six threes. And then finally, I just want to give this a little bit of surface bump into the normal so that we can customize that and add a little bit more surface bump if we want to. So I'll put the Voronoi distance into the normal, but then there's going to be some weird shading issues. And that's because we need to convert the black and white data into normal data. So I'll go to the add menu and we're going to search for a bump node and we'll put it between the Voronoi and the principal and then the distance value can go into the height value to convert it to bump data and then here on the strength I want to turn this down to like a 0.1 so it's not quite as bumpy of course you can turn up more if you want to to make it look like a bumpy rock but I don't want to do that I want it to be nice and smooth because it's a smooth rock so that is it for the procedural material. So I'll now show you how to join it together into a custom node group. So I can click and drag to box select all the nodes and I'll press control G to join it together into a node group. Now, if you hit the tab key, you can go in and out of the node group. So I'll drag the node group over here. Let's copy the material name and I'll paste it here in the node group. So it's called smooth rock. I can also drag this out to make it a bit bigger and then I'll hit tab to go into the node group and I'll hit the N key to open up the side panel. And here on the group tab, 
I'm gonna double click on the BSDF and I'll just rename that to shader because I like that better. So now right over here, we have this group input and we can plug values up to the group input to control them outside of the node group. So this mapping node is plugged up to all the textures. So the mapping scale will change the size of the entire material at once. So I'll put the scale into the extra socket here. And then if I click on the scale, I wanna just make it one value instead of three. So on the type here, I'll change the vector to float and that way it's just one value, but then I need to turn the default value back to one, and I also need to go out of the node group, and I wanna turn the scale back to one. So let's go back into the node group. Now I also wanna control the noise scale, the wave scale, and the Voronoi scale, so we'll put this scale first into the extra socket, then the wave scale into the extra socket, and then the Voronoi scale into the extra socket, and then I will rename these accordingly. So the first one was noise, the second one was wave, and the third one was Voronoi. Then I wanna control the colors, so I'll drag the group input over here, and I can take color A, put that into the extra socket, and color B, put that into the extra socket, and then I can rename these to color one and color two. Then I wanna control the distortion, so if I drag the group input back here, this first linear light has this factor here to control the distortion, so I'll put the factor into the extra socket, double click on this to rename it, and I'll rename this to distortion one. And then for the second distortion, we're gonna take the second linear light factor, and we'll put that into the extra socket, and then the second one I'll rename to distortion two. Then I wanna control the detail values. So you can see on the wave texture and the noise texture, they both have detail values of 15. So I'll put this detail into the extra socket. And then this noise texture detail, we can put this into the same exact socket. This way the detail value here will control both of them at the same time. Now for the second detail value, we can take the Voronoi detail. You can see if I turn this up and down, that's making the material look a bit different. So I'll put the detail into the extra socket there. And then I'll rename both of these to detail one and and detail too. Then I wanna control the roughness of the material. So I'll drag this over here to the principal shader. We can put the roughness into the extra socket. And then I wanna control the bump strength. So we'll take this strength here and put that into the extra socket. And I can double click on this to rename it and I'll rename it to bump strength. And then finally, I wanna control the displacement strength. So we'll drag this down here. Let's take the displacement scale, put that into the extra socket. And I'll rename this to displacement strength. So let's select the group input and I can drag it back down here. I'll hit tab to go out of the node group and the N key to close the side panel. And let me just make this bigger and I'll now review the finished procedural material. So we have the scale value, then we just have the noise scale, we just have the wave scale, and we just have the Voronoi scale. And then we have the two different colors. So you can make the colors look a little bit different. So you can have two different variations, kind of some darker areas or lighter areas. You can also change the distortion to make it look different. And there's a second distortion value to add a lot more detail and then there's detail value one and then also detail value two then there's the roughness of the material if you want to be a little bit more shiny then you can also change the bump strength if you want to make it look a lot more bumpy and not really be smooth and then there is the displacement strength to actually pop out the mesh so that'll be it for this video. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel, a great way to do that is by purchasing the finished project files. And you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page with the links in the description. And you can also check out my ultimate Blender procedural material pack, which comes with all of my procedural materials, pre-set up in the asset browser with custom thumbnails, sorted catalogs, and customizable node groups. So once you install my ultimate material pack as an asset library, into Blender, you can just drag and drop all the procedural materials into your 3D scenes to quickly add materials to your projects. You can also purchase any of my materials individually on my Gumroad store. And to learn how to create more procedural materials, check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist. The link is in the description. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching.